So what I try to do there is to kind of like say, here I am. I'm supposed to be the guitar player, the entertainer, so here I am. If we were playing, for instance, uh, if, you, if you do a one, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Then the, the, the five. That's the way I resolve it. So I would do, in the G chord, I might hit the tonic. Push up on the, 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 the C there. Push it up to D again. Mm -hmm. Back to the B flat. And there's that bend again when you just, just... <laughs> Yeah, well that's what I hear. So I'll take the four of the G, right. the, which is the C, right? right. But I don't want to hit it I don't want to hit the D first, so I like to slide up to it. And then you take that B flat and just mm -hmm. nudge it almost between B flat and B. Right. Yeah. That's great. Now, uh, uh, sometimes I got the time, I might bring it on up to, but most times it sounds better to me. Then I'd go back to the one again. Then, if I got enough time again and want to play around with it just a little bit, to the five, be the five right? chord, mm -hmm. right? Could you do that lick again? Because that's uh... so you're bending the. Starting uh, on, the, on, e, on right? the E, and go up to the F. F sharp, right. Then we come back down to the eighth fret again. Right. So I haven't played that many notes, but it's still kind of going to the path. everything that needs to be said. <laughs> Hey everybody, Gary here with Pal Music, and in this video we're gonna go over that awesome B.B. King solo you just heard over a slow blues in G, and then the little lesson that followed it. So this is from a three hour masterclass that I bought, I recommend you buy, from Alfred Music, I'll link in the description. I found this clip that I used here on YouTube, so I'm just taking this kind of four minute clip from this three hour masterclass, adding the fret live animations. And in this lesson, we're gonna take each phrase that BB plays, go more in depth on the techniques being used, slow it down, talk about some of the theory implications. What are these notes that he's bending to? How does the notes that he's using relate to the chord? And each step of the way, I'm gonna demonstrate taking these riffs from BB and kind of changing them up to insert them into your own personal vocabulary. So to give them your own kind of flavor. So here I'm gonna do that with the first two riffs of the solo. I'm gonna play them like I learned them from BB and then I'm gonna change them up just a little bit. And now just a little different. Let's try that with one more riff. And now workshopping it just a little bit. Because the kind of three-step process of learning the riff, understanding its context, then changing it up and making it your own, that's how you really incorporate it into your own playing and use it as a creative tool. So that's my goal here with these lessons. So for Pal Music patrons, every note played by BB, I've tabbed out and I've put the timestamps in the tab if you wanna follow along with the tab. And if you really wanna go in depth on the study of applied music theory on the guitar, learning the theory and then applying it to make music and learn songs, that's what my Fret Live Fretboard Mastery program is all about. You could take either a self-paced version of that program where it's self-guided through all the content or you could do a live version with a cohort of 40 other students 
weekly live Zoom sessions where we interact on video, and it's much more like a college experience where you get that camaraderie and weekly accountability. So I'll link that in the description along with a video tour of the course where you could hear from students about how it's transformed their playing. And last but not least, you could download two free multi-page full-color PDFs on the diatonic scale shapes and pentatonic scale shapes, and those are also linked in the description. All right, let's get into the lesson. Now, what really amazed me about BB here is his bending, the bending accuracy. So he's bending up three frets in pitch, a minor third. He's using his index finger to bend whole steps, and all his bends are so in tune. And sometimes you don't even know it's a bend because he doesn't actually bend. Like when he goes like this, these are the two notes. He goes. <laughs> right? So he's bending even when he doesn't have to. So first, a quick word on strings. Oh. So during the course of making this video, not just making the video, but preparing for it, I think I broke four E strings, four of them. Little did I know that was about to be five. So now this riff right here, oh, another one. I actually broke three in one hour. It's documented. It was during a live Patreon session. So during this hour and a half session, I broke three E strings trying to demonstrate BB's minor third bend. Ooh, wow, you guys hear that? Just pop my E string. That's the second string I broke tonight. An F to a G sharp. So he goes. That's the third one of the night. Third one, trifecta. So I feel confident to say, even though the signature BB King set of strings by Gibson are tens, that he got rid of the low E string and added an eight on the bottom. And according to Billy Gibbons, this is what he heard from BB as well. At that time, BB was one of the first exponents of the uh, first wave of light gauge strength, which was 0 0.008 on the high end. I went to 0 0.007. My fingers are ripped up. I started with 10s, didn't work. I went to 9s, it was still killing me. All right, so I'm on my way to Guitar Center. I thought switching from 10s to 9s was going to do the trick, but it's that major third pre-bend over and over. Like BB said to Billy Gibbons, why work so hard? I'm getting some eights. So this set is eights. This is an eight to 38, I believe, on this guitar. I started filming the video with this guitar because I wanted the humbuckers, but I broke the E string. This was a eight and a half on here. So I, I've gone through all sorts of string experimenting. I just don't know how to play in BB style without breaking strings. Anyway, my main point is that if you're gonna do index finger bends a whole step or these step and a half and even two whole step bends that BB does, get yourself some really light gauge strings and try to find ones that are more durable. So as you're gonna see with BB style, the notes you're bending to, you have to think about what those notes are because he's always targeting notes with his bends, right? So this opening lick, Right there, that's on the one chord, G. So we're right in this G major pentatonic. So if we think about a G7 shape right here, this is often called the E shape, right? Because here's an E. And in my Fret Live Fretboard Mastery program, we go over the whole cage system. And so in that shape, there's our, our pentatonic pattern two, our House of Blues. He goes. And that's really outlining the chord. Five, six, one, three, one. So real quick, throughout this analysis, I talk about how he's targeting chord tones. So in a standard blues, we have three chords, the one, four, and the five, and they're all dominant seven chords. In this case, G7, C7, D7, that's our one, four, five. And to make a dominant seven chord, we follow the formula of having a root, a major third, a perfect fifth, and a minor seventh. That's the formula. So anytime I talk about him targeting a chord tone, it's one of those tones relative to one of those chords. But now he gives us that minor vibe. Right, so then we switch to our classic. Now in the masterclass, he talks about the scales he uses, and this is definitely one of them. Whereas this, I think he's thinking chord. This he's thinking minor pentatonic, right? But when he runs down, he gives that minor third a little micro bend. 
Not quite to the major third, but somewhere in between. All right, then his second riff. Man, this one I worked on so much. So this riff, he's starting with a minor third bend. Now we're on the four chord, but he doesn't, this riff, he's not really outlining the chord tones. He's playing more in the minor, the G minor pentatonic tonality. So what he actually goes back and forth between is the flat seven of the key and the fifth of the key, G minor. But that sounds cool over the four chord. It's kind of jazzy actually, right? Because in relation to the four chord, it's actually the two and the four. So those are like upper extension jazz tones, right? So it gives it a little bit of a jazzy feel. So he pre-bends. To work on your tuning, hit the note you're going for here on the 13th fret. And then see if you could match it. That was flat there. Flat. There we go. It really, you really got to squeeze it up there. Now we're in that BB box. So now this riff right here, oh, another one. Then he does that trill. And that puts us in the, the BB box right there. So that first riff, straight out of this pentatonic box. And the only reason I feel confident putting that there is in the master class. Those are the two main scales, pentatonic scales he talks about. This one and this one. Because the interviewer asks him to demonstrate going between those two and he does something like, you know, something like that. Anyway, but so the BB box is so many things, but that first riff, I feel like we could think of in the context of that minor pentatonic, but then when he goes, that straight BB box right there, right? You know, and then that's playing off that chord, the C chord, right? Just like here, now here. So he likes to play off the E shapes of these chords by doing that. So you could kind of think of that as that E shape pentatonic there. The BB box can be a lot of things, but he's just playing off the chord. Now his vibrato, watch him teach you his vibrato. I won't, but he, he freehands it. It's all like a shake in the wrist. He's not touching the guitar with anything other than his finger on the string and he just kind of flutters his hand. I can't freehand flutter. I like to use the neck as a fulcrum for my vibrato, but vibrato is the kind of thing you just want to practice for hours and hours, just, you know, just vibrato. It's such a signature thing to develop. So after he goes, now that, that leads us back to the, the G. Right? So that's the major third of the G. Again, slow bend up to the chord tone. So that's an example how this BB box, even though it's just, he's bending to these other notes. So it's, and sometimes he bends there too. So it's really this. You know, it's so many things because he, bends from those notes to various different notes depending on the chord. So up to that major third of the one chord. Then he goes. So we're 
we're on the one chord again now. G7. Now where most people would go like this, he goes, he bends up to that note. He bends up to that fifth. So, bends the second up to a major third. And then index finger to that fifth. And then comes down flat third to root. So again, mixing major and minor, right? Because here he went up one, two, major three, five, and then down the four, flat three, one, right? So mixing major and minor. And then to the six, which is part of the major, part of the major scale, or it's a major interval. It's not a minor interval, a major six. So beautiful stylistic thing there from BB. All right, now we come back to the four chord. And he's gonna give us some chord tones. He's gonna bend to the third. So he goes three, three, two, one. And then, and then from that major six to the flat seven, a little, so that little half step bend, and then he might just be going a little trill. But I like doing pick, pick, pull. Now he goes down the arpeggio. Down this. C major arpeggio. Now this here, duh, 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 going from the fourth to the major third, is such a bluesy move. Like when he goes. Or. It's such a bluesy thing to do. So adding to that arpeggio. He's going four, three, one. Now here's, to me, the coolest lick of the entire solo. So now up a minor seventh arpeggio, root third, fifth, half step bend to the minor seven. So that's like, now, now that lick, he's bending a minor third to the root from the six. Then drops it down to the flat seven, down to the five. So it's. So. Now that last time, he's bending to the major third of the one chord. So this is all on the four chord, C. but then up to this note, which is back up to the one. So again, he's always, even though that BB box is just those six notes, it's so much more than that because he's bending to different, he's basically bending through chromatics. You know, that two can become a flat three, can become a three, can, depending on the chord, he'll bend say that note right now that's labeled two, either a half step, a whole step, a step and a half. All right, then once he gets back to that one chord.
classic BB. So he's just muting with his hand the other strings and putting his pinky on the G. And just, he uses that rake to get a bigger sound, right? And then, and then blues scale, four to flat five. Little trill, and then hit the four again, and then walk down that blues scale. But then BB box, you're gonna bend the two to, to the flat three. All right, now I labeled this mixolydian mode. So BB in the session plays the G major scale. He talks about that being a scale he practices, the major scale. He actually doesn't practice the pentatonic scale, he practices the chromatic scale. And he says in the session, the chromatic scale helps him hear things. And it makes sense. He's so good at, at jumping from half step to half step, practicing the chromatic scale. And so mixolydian mode, he might not be thinking of it as mixolydian mode, but it's G major. So how is G major and D mixolydian the same notes? So mixolydian mode is just the fifth mode of the major scale or of the diatonic scale. And all that means is if in the major scale, we start on the fifth note and end on the fifth note, what we hear is the mixolydian mode. So the fifth note in G is D. So if we start and end on D, we have D mixolydian mode. So what makes it different than G major? Well, when you hear those seven notes relative to the tonic of D, then all the intervals are changed relative to the D. So our ear is interpreting it differently because we're hearing it differently. So why did I not label it as G major? Because I'm showing how he's relating to the chord and having it labeled as D mixolydian really shows how he's hitting the flat seven, how he's hitting the major third, how he's hitting the notes relative to the chord he's on, which is D seven. So when he goes. It's part of that scale, that's why I put it that way. But similar to the opening line. But here he's going. This is over the five chord. Right? You want to know, you want to see the chord there too, because he's playing off the chord tones. Again, on that four chord, he likes to hit that scale degree four over the over this chord, so that and then these little micro bends, micro bend on the seven, five, six, three. Just kind of creating some momentum to this. So, just kind of leading us there. You know, ending on the root. So that root is bending two to major three, to the five, to the one. It's an arpeggio. One, three, five, three, one, three, five, three, one. So that's a way to play a G major arpeggio. And then again, that minor pentatonic coming down from the fifth to the fourth to the major third.
so in this opening solo, just so you have some context in the three hour masterclass that I'm linking in the description, that solo was an example of an opening solo where he said when he opens the song with a solo, it's more of an introduction. You know, later, if there's a second solo, that will be building the intensity of the song. But so there's a sweetness and a softness to that solo as kind of a way to open a song. And then in the segment where he's teaching, he's talking about playing off the chord. So being BB did his own teaching, I mainly just went over the intro solo, which he didn't discuss, but there's a couple things during the teaching segment I also wanna go over. So BB spent more time in the BB box than the Albert King box or the House of Blues box. So for example, this lick, where he goes, That lick in the Albert King box or the House of Blues is, to me, way easier because you're bending with your third finger. But he's bending with his first finger. So very BB thing to do. But then he also plays the same lick in the House of Blues. Well, that's what I hear. So I'll take the four of the G, right, the, which is the C, right? right. But I don't want to hit it. I don't want to hit the D first, so I like to slide up to it. And then you take that B flat and just mm -hmm. nudge it almost between B flat and D. Right. Yeah. That's great. So here he's really demonstrating he knows these intervals. He's not just knowing the note names, he knows the intervals. So he says this note is the four of the G and he says he's gonna push it up to the five. Now what you're hearing him do a lot is this. So he's raking the strings by muting them with my right hand. You could also mute them with your left hand if you just put a finger over the strings. And now he's hyper aware of is he bending this note, the flat third, is he bending it to the third? or somewhere in between, right? So now we can move that BB box to the five chord. Then the, the, the five. And then on the four chord, do the same thing. And then on the one, we can do the same thing. Right, so we can move that. Right, all right everybody, so now I'm gonna demonstrate trying to learn and play this solo as close to note for note as possible, very close to the original. It might lack some feel because it's me trying to be B.B. King. That's not the ultimate goal. The goal is to take that influence of B.B. King because I resonate with that sound. I love that sound. And I want to take that influence and give it my own flavor, right? I want to put it in a, a Gary blender. But first, I'm going to try to really dissect and learn the ins and outs of his playing and then put it in my own blender. So after I try to play it note for note, then I'm gonna change it up a little, and then I'm gonna leave 12 bars for you, and I'll link the backing track in the description.
Before I go, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to the following upper level POW Music patrons William Creighton, Andrew Vogel, Chris Watson, David Crawford, Derek Mickel, Don Stringham, Donald James Grass, Jake Martin, John Cushman, Joseph McCarthy, Kent Grissom, Lemuel Faustin, Michael Varney, Randy Wallingford, Sam Juans, Scott Lee, Sean Ellis, Stephen Pisano, Trampus Thompson. Thank you guys so much, and thank you to all of the POW Music patrons that help make this content possible. Happy playing. I'll see you guys next time.